table topics or impromptu off the cuff speaking. Raise your hand if that's your favorite part of Toastmasters. All right, we got one in the crowd. Me neither though, I'm with the rest of you. It's, it's one of the scariest parts to this day after 10 years in Toastmasters, but sometimes the most worthwhile pursuits in life are the hardest and most uncomfortable, sort of what Hannah was just talking about. And we are all here to develop communication skills. Impromptu, spontaneous speaking is a critical part of that. Think of all the skills in life where this comes in handy or can get you out of a bind. Everyday conversations, rescuing your speech when you lose your place, rescuing somebody else when they need you to fill in, acing a job interview, or all the tough questions you get at the office every day. If this is how you feel, that look of panic when asked a random on the spot question, you're not alone. Many people experience anxiety, what Hannah referred to as the fight or flight response. And it's, I think, because of the uncertainty of it all which is even more for impromptu speeches than for prepared speeches. So today we're gonna to go over some practical strategies, techniques that I think will help you be better prepared for these seemingly unpreparable situations, whether in the club setting like today or in the high pressure scenario of a contest, which I encourage everyone to sign up for January 6th, club contest, table topics. So let's start at the beginning. The first thing that happens is you're presented with the topic or the question. What do we do from here? Do we just jump in and start answering the question? I think there's a strategic approach we can take. The first thing we wanna do seems obvious, but we need to listen. I know when I come up here to do table topics, I've got butterflies, I've got my heart pumping, everything, everybody's staring at me. What I really need to do is focus on the person asking the question and really listen and absorb what the question is. It gives you just those extra milliseconds or seconds to start gathering your thoughts. Taking one or two deep breaths is a physiological technique to improve your physical readiness to answer the question. Take a deep breath through your nose and a longer breath slowly through your mouth once or twice. And while you're doing that, think about your answer. Then you can take a short pause beyond that to think. Even in a contest, there really isn't a limit on how long you can wait before you start speaking and the time begins. Now, you don't want to take this to an extreme, but even as long as 15 or 30 seconds, I've seen this in contests, can give you the time to come up with an answer. So gather your thoughts, think about your answer, then smile and get ready to perform. Now, you could also. Oh, I'm sorry, this, the next one is to give an introduction. So this is very common to acknowledge the audience. It also kills a little bit more time and lets you think of your answer a little bit longer. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, honored, esteemed, dear, valued guests. See how much time I just took there? And then you can repeat the question. Sometimes this helps you and it also helps the audience ground yourself in what was the question and what am I talking about? Remember that in Toastmasters, we are all here on the same side. Out in the real world, there's a lot of variance. There's hostile crowds. You've got customers and executives and so on. Here, we are friends. We're helping each other. They, we want you to succeed. So if anything, maybe this makes you a little bit less worried about table topics. How do you start your answer? The first thing I want you to do is pick the first idea that pops into your head. That's it. Don't wait for a bigger, better response. I used to do that. I would think of something, no, nah, that's not good enough. Try to think of something, no, nah, not good. And before long, you're, you've got chaos going on in your brain. Pick the first response. Sometimes these boring little ideas become the catalyst for the most unique stories. And sometimes they don't, and that's okay. Then you wanna have a strategy for how to answer the question. This is somewhat the meat of today's presentation because most of us go in cold and we just try to answer it as if we're having a normal conversation. The problem is table topics questions can be a little more challenging and nuanced. And if you think ahead of time about ways to answer different questions, you may have a better 
a more creative answer to that question. So let's go through four strategies. The first strategy is the easiest one, and that is state your opinion. So if the question is, if you can pick someone for president anywhere in the world, who would it be? You can say a name and then support it with one to three supporting statements. Or you can use the pros and the cons and then give a recommendation. That's a simple strategy. The second strategy is cause and effect. So if someone were to say, tell us your thoughts about the pandemic. Now, I know that's a very, that would be a very tough question to answer politically, but you could talk about the situation, how we got here, and then what the consequences are. So if the question is of that type of an open-ended, tell us about X, think about situation, cause and effect. The third strategy is to take the topic and chunk it up into three pieces, however you want. So Hannah was asked the question last time, what's your favorite comedy? And she gave three different movies. Or you can separate it into three aspects of what every comedy should have. Every comedy should have these three things, one, two, three. And here's why X is my favorite movie. And then the fourth strategy is to organize your answer in the form of a timeline. So taking that same question, you could say, well, when I was young, I loved innocent comedies like X. And then when I was a single guy, didn't have a care in the world, I like these kind of comedies. And now that I'm older with a family, this is what resonates with me. So think about chronology. Any question adapts itself really well to history, past, present, future. And then you're just putting it together into a simple structure. You've got the idea, you've got the three things, however you're, whatever strategy you're using. And then I encourage you to wrap it up with a summary or some pithy or punchy ending if possible, but don't ramble all over the place, stick to the script. Whatever you do, it's a speech, it's a performance. Be confident like any other speech. Put on the smile, use the facial expressions, the vocal variety, all of these techniques you learn as a speaker. And from the beginning, that pause and restating the question can set you up for success. I mentioned it before, be concise, brief, don't ramble. It's one to two minutes. And then be yourself. There are a lot of clever techniques you can use, but if they don't match your authentic personality, don't use them. And if they do, go for it. Last but not least, I wanna talk about a few advanced strategies. If you're going to comp compete in a contest where you just wanna take your game up a level. And the first one takes the most time. And this is sort of like when you prepare for a job interview and you might lay out six or seven stories about your work experience that can fit into any type of question. You can do the same with table topics. It's not cheating. It's not cheating at all. You can go ahead and take out your notebook and come up with six ideas, six concepts or answers and three or four bullets for each in different categories, maybe politics and science and my personal stories and have something that possibly could fit one of a number of questions. So related to that, people love a personal story. Yash's joke today was a personal story, which I found hilarious. Nobody else could have told that joke because it's his joke. So tell a personal story. If you're doing bullet number one, come up with three or four stories in advance. After today's meeting, some point today, plan out your, your list of stories. And next time you get up to do table topics, see if one of those will fit. You could always change the topic. Sometimes people abuse this, but there are clever ways to do it. Let's say you're asked a question about football and Tom Brady, and you have no care about football whatsoever, and you don't know anything about the sport. You could say something like, I haven't watched a football game in 20 years. I couldn't even tell you how many points are in a field goal, but I love competition. And that's why Iron Chef is my favorite show. It's a competition between amazing cooks. And you've just changed the topic from football to cooking. Maybe that's a stretch, but you get what I mean. Be contrarian. And what I like about this item is it lends itself to humor and tall tales. So if somebody were to ask you that same question from earlier, if you can pick anyone for president, who would it be? You could say, I think our current political system is in shambles. And because of that, a matriarchic dictatorship is the way we should go. And you could just go off on some ridiculous idea and 
have the audience cracking up. You could act things out. If you're talking about people, like if I was talking about my daughters, I could say, Emily ran through the grass and yelled at her sister, hey, throw me the ball. And Clara said, oh, but where is it? And you, you know, you can get people laughing that way if you're the drama type. Last but not least, always be consuming information, news, articles, books, podcasts, conversations with your peers, because that will arm you for more content to be able to answer any question. I hope these strategies were helpful. I know we only had eight to 10 minutes here. I'm gonna share this later in the member downloads and I'll share it online so that you can study this for next time. I encourage you to use some of these today during table topics.